Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Greetings, friends. My name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet. I apologize for the fan noise. But we're doing a little bit of testing on some coolers today, and you're gonna have to bear with me for a second. We're gonna be testing the brand new NH. U12A from Noctua, a very competent and capable cooler that I've already been doing a little bit of testing with. And we're going to see, can it cool the hottest CPU I've ever experienced? Seriously, my 7820X is uh, its just a lava pit. It is a room heater. It is just a terrible CPU. And in all my research, it's just, that's the way it is. And we're going to see, can this baby cooler cool anywhere near as good as uh, this LickTech 360 it's a new Enermax cooler and it's uh, basically they took their Threadripper cooler, brought it over to all the other sockets. Apparently it's got a 500 watt TDP, which is just a silly number to put on there because uh, we're I'm not really seeing that it's doing that well, but it should be like one of the best coolers out there, e e theoretically. And I want to see when I put this thing on here, what kind of uh, temperatures we got. So if you could check out this over here, this is Ida64. It's only been running for oh, four minutes. But we've reached uh, temperature, the, the fluid to high temperature level already because I've been doing testing like crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you. I have a really, really hot core that reaches 94 degrees. And I've delitted this CPU. I haven't done any lapping. But I'm going to go ahead and shut this off so we can. Yeah, there we go. It'll still take us. There we go. So um, yeah, I've I've deleted this CPU. I've put liquid metal on it twice. I thought maybe I did something wrong the first time around. It is just the hottest CPU ever, and I was just running the Ida 64 FPU test, which is an unrealistic workload on the CPU, and you can see that this is running at stock settings, which is a 3.6 gigahertz uh, base up to a 4 gigahertz boost on all cores, and then it goes uh, in like the 4.2 or 4.4 range for a couple of cores, but when we're running a, a load like that, you can see it gets really freaking hot, and we saw a core hit 95 degrees. And I can't do anything about it. Uh, maybe I need to lap the CPU, but I've done research and that's just the way these CPUs are. Mine's an engineering sample, might be worse. So uh, this is my test, my video card test bench, and that's what I'm living with. And I've always kind of wanted to figure out this temperature thing. So I think we'll get a little bit more information today by doing some cooler swaps and some things. And I want to see uh, if this can actually match uh, what this is doing. Probably not, but I'm thinking close. But just for reference, this thing was running stock and it was getting to 96 degrees with a delayed. So there's obviously something wrong with the CPU. It's just, it, you would need a very intense cooler just to run it at stock, seeing as I'm almost running into thermal junction, I'm almost throttling with this extremely huge cooler. Now you might argue, hey, maybe this cooler is junk or there's something wrong with it. Not in my experience, I've had pretty good luck with it on other platforms, but I guess we'll find out because if this thing ends up performing better, we'll know something's definitely wrong, but I have a feeling that this is going to just barely keep it under 100 degrees. But we're going to switch this out because I want to do some testing with this thing. Noctua is always so kind to send me over their products. Everyone's been testing this thing. So if you want to check out like a real meat and potatoes review, uh, I saw Optimum Tech did a real good review on it. He's uh, really good for scientifically testing. I'm not going to scientifically test today. We're going to do real world Timmy Joe style. And I want to thank Noctua for sending over a uh, lifetime supply of their thermal paste because that's nice of them. Uh, they sent over even some thermal wipes. They sent over the uh, new NTH2, which is supposed to be better for, I would say, liquid or uh, uh, extreme cooling uh, because their, NA their NTH1 was already a very, very good high end thermal paste. And uh, in doing my research, I found that I think that this is more meant for extreme overclocking. This is meant for more every day, but they're both non curing really high-end thermal compounds. We won't really be testing those today. I do have the two on there right now. Just We'll keep using the two just to avoid uh, anything. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick video where I get this thing strapped onto here, and uh, we'll see. Can this cooler, in its nice, beautiful nature, cool a 7820X, which is a 8-core, 16-thread processor, with uh, such beautiful fans. It's got their new fans 
Uh, here, we'll pull this out of here just so I can get the name on the fans. It's their NFA12 uh, times 24 PWM fans. They're insane. First of all, the, uh, the the fan is like really brittle, like not brittle, but uh, hard. Like there's no flex in the fan whatsoever. And it basically was made like that so they could eliminate any sort of gap around here and these are supposed to basically perform you know like uh the, the same with a much lower noise floor as their other fans and we all know noctua's fans are ugly as sin but they're very very good fans so i'm gonna go get this strapped on the 7820x and we'll do a little hunting and see is it is it a good cooler is it a worthwhile situation or is there something wrong with my Enermax cooler i don't know i don't think so so we'll check it out Woo! We got them all installed here, and I uh, just want to get this out of the way. I know a lot of you uh, don't like Noctua because of the brown fans and what have you, but there are a lot of you out there who do and who appreciate the level of precision and the level of cooling potential that Noctua offers. They're you know, the best coolers out there, okay, and I know there are some close competitors, but I'm not gonna know what they're doing, and you know, uh, the brown aside, which I wish on this new one, if they would have just made the fans black, I bet they would have sold a 10, 12, 15% more stock, but I digress. I know you guys can make some nice looking fans, I've seen them before. So, this is the old fan that came with the NHU12S, where this new one's the NHU12A. And this new cooler uh, it has different fans, as you can see in this B-roll, a uh, lot more rigid fan and a uh, lot more blades and stuff like that. And I already can tell with the testing I've done, I've actually did a whole other uh, motherboard and stuff like with this cooler. I know it's, it's really quiet for its cooling potential. In fact, they're not saying it is just an upgrade from the uh, NHU12S which is on the screen here, they're saying that it can compete with the NHD 15, which is, look how big this thing is. And the whole, you know, spiel with it is that there's, uh, you know, full RAM compatibility and all that. So I'm going to call BS on that a little bit. I, it does well with the RAM for sure. But on my specific motherboard here, the, uh, the EVGA X299 Dark, I've got little fans, little baby fans on the VRM that are preventing this uh, whole setup from sitting as nicely as it could. It still fits, but uh, the, the fan, the fans actually just sitting a hair on the top here off of where it should be, which I don't think is going to matter too, too much. But you're here for the performance and let's check that out. So let's start up the FPU test and we'll see just how good she performs. So I've disconnected uh, the Enermax cooler here. Um, there is two Be Quiet fans blowing through it just to provide, like it's an open air, it shouldn't matter. It's pretty warm in here because I've been testing coolers and my Threadripper system's pretty hot to begin with. So what are we seeing for temperatures? So it's jumping up to 85, 86, 85, 86, and it shouldn't really change because it's not a liquid cooler. So it shouldn't take very long to get to the max temperature and we're already doing better than that Enermax cooler. 87, 88. We'll let her cook for a second here and we'll draw some conclusions. Well, we hit the 90. I would say it's, it's already performing better. 
I guess we'll have to let it run. I'll let it run for 10 minutes just to see what happens. And then we'll come back and we'll make some conclusions on this cooler and maybe do a little bit of extra overclocking. Cause, uh, and I'll explain my whole overclocking situation with this computer because it's kind of a weird one. Give me a minute. Okey-dokey, interesting stuff going on here. We've been running the stress test for nice, almost 18 minutes. And we see here we have some results up on the screen. Uh, it's hovering around 93 degrees, which is in and around where the 360 mil all-in-one liquid cooler from Entermax was hovering at. So do I question how good this is or is the Noctua that good? I think it kind of is the two of those things. I really need to get my hands on a 360 mil uh, Asetek AIO and do a comparison with that other thing because uh, I, I'm not confident in its performance, even though I have seen some pretty cool performance, but I was usually hanging it out the window, uh, you know, in the middle of winter. Uh, so I, that's my experience with it, and it seemed to be pretty good. So that's not why we're here today. We're talking about the NHU-12A, and it's performing admirably, considering it's trying to cool about the hottest CPU in the world, and I have the fan curve set, you know, as it would be normally in the BIOS. I, you know, reset the, uh, the defaults, and that's what it's loaded at. It is damn near silent compared to the Entermax cooler, which runs very loud. I'll adjust for the fan noise at this particular whatever. And we can see here up on the screen, uh, I have at 13 minutes, the Entermax cooler was at 92 degrees with a max temperature on the package of 95 degrees. We see here, this is still running the stress test right now, barely audible. I can hear my other you know, computer louder than it, and it's not doing anything except for screen capturing. It's a uh, Threadripper with another Entermax cooler on it, so makes you wonder. But, uh, and uh, yeah, we're what? One degree over on the total package temperature, and <laughs> It's not gonna get any hotter than that. Now, maybe if I shut the case and you don't have, maybe you don't have the greatest airflow in your case, that changes up a bit compared to uh, an AIO where the, you know, the, raid, the radiator's mounted right at a intra entry point for uh, cold air into the case. There's definitely a lot of factors. It's hard to properly test coolers. That's why I like to just do a real world test. But I'm gonna go ahead and overclock this now to where I usually have this system sitting. And you might wonder, well, if it's that hot on the FPU test, how are you overclocking anything? Well, the FPU test is a very unrealistic workload. And um, gaming, it really never hits that kind of thing. Maybe if I was video rendering with this. But what I've been doing with this, because it's so hot, is I've been overclocking to around 4.7 gigahertz, 4.75 gigahertz. And... Uh, I've been leaving it there even though it's not really the most stable as soon as you introduce any crazy workloads. In fact, uh, Cinebench R20 will run one time with that overclock and then the second time it fails because it's not, it's just not a good CPU for overclocking like that. But for gaming, it, I never had an issue at 4.75 gigahertz. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that overclock on and we'll see, can I run my Cinebenches? Can I run my Cinebenches with this going on, we'll see. I'm gonna go we'll switch it over. Okay, we are now set at the highest uh, overclock I could achieve and run uh, Cinebench R15, which is hard, but Cinebench R20 as well, uh, which is even harder, and in my opinion, if it can run through that, should be good enough to game with. So 4.75 gigahertz, that's a 47 multiplier at 1.278 volts and a BCLK of 101. And that seems to be as far as I can ever get this chip, at least with that Entermax cooler. But I'm starting to wonder if I should try some other things. So let's go ahead and we'll launch a little Cinebench R15. And uh, I'm a little over 2000 is all I can ever really get with this thing. Uh, and that's what I would expect. But one thing I did figure out 
she's ramping up a little bit there. When I was saying before that she was pretty silent and I had it set on smart, I actually had it set on max the whole time. So I had the fan running at uh, just over 2,000 RPM, which is as fast as the fans will go on this. And it was like barely audible compared to the old cooler. So we're getting 2,026. Uh, and can we run it again? See if there's no problems. And then we'll check a little bit of, uh, yeah, 4.75 gigahertz. We are breaking the 100 degree barrier on the package there, 102. But we're not throttling so far as, you know, the, the frequency dropping that low. And I will leave the computer at this in game with it. And it's not doing too bad. The highest I've ever hit with, uh, I think, a 4.8. 85 gigahertz one time was 2050 with uh, hardware monitor closed and probably some processes and stuff closed. So we're near the top performance I've ever got with this computer with a freaking 12, uh, 120 mil air cooler. With an air cooler, why wouldn't I have this in my system over a, a liquid cooler if it's going to perform the same? It's crazy. In conclusion, as this I hope runs all the way through, I'm pretty sure it's going to, uh, this thing kicks all butt and it is 100% worth the premium they're asking of $100 for it in that it's probably the best air cooler out there except for there, there might be a few that could beat it by a few degrees, but at what cost? Now this thing has one less heat pipe, it's much larger, there's some RAM compatibility issues for sure. I could definitely not use this with the, well, I could use it with the RAM that's in there, but there's some taller RAM, some seriously taller RAM that just doesn't fit with this. You wind up missing half your slots. It's running R20! This is crazy. This thing is uh, just a dynamo of a cooler, man. I'm, I'm really psyched on it. It's, it's like AIO performance with two fans in a 120 mil form factor. You can fit your graphics card in there. It's not touching it. You can fit your RAM in there. It's not touching it. It's a little bit off on the little fans on the VRM on the Dark Pro, but oh man, 4885. So what's the best I ever did? Uh, 4951 I did before. Let's close. We'll just run it one more time. We'll see if it'll run twice. Cause this is a hard, this is an AVX workload. So this is a hard workload for the CPU to run. And I'd be very surprised if it ran twice at this frequency. Cause like I, if I ran the FPU test in IDA64 right now, it would shut off like that. And it completed twice. Uh, yeah, so I would say that eh, we're about a hundred points off. It, it might be throttling by the time it's done that, but I don't know, that's that's damn near the best performance I've seen out of this computer with a freaking air cooler. So I want to thank Noctua for sending this over. It is my favorite new air cooler by far, and it blows my mind what it's capable of, especially you can't hear the damn thing when it's running full blast. You can't. Where this is my Threadripper computer right now. It's sucking air like a freaking, like it's Coca-Cola. Anyways, I'm out watching me do Instagram and Twitter. Thank not too for sending this over. I'm going to do my best to uh, get a proper AIO or 360 Ace Attack, you know, current gen so we can test this thing because I'm really starting to doubt that this thing is actually as good as I thought it was. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that later. But as far as if you're looking for the best cooler out there, this isn't the top three for sure. And it's a 120 mil air cooler from Noctua with two fans, no pump to break. If, you know, <laughs> the, one of the fans goes <laughs> by chance, which I really doubt it ever would, it would still cool your computer. It's not like if a pump goes, you freaking could fry your CPU and it's silent as all hell. I'm at watching me join Scrum Twitter. Thank you very much for watching this program. I'll see you guys in another video.